Hi guys, this is Ruby. Thank you for purchasing my starter kit. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to make wine coasters. It's very easy and by just um, doing all these simple steps you'll quickly get the hang of it and it's really really fun that you can do. So let's start. Um, firstly you want to open your starter kit. Um, inside there's a brochure. Please make sure that you read it. Um, you know, and there's certain things that you need to do is to tie your hair back um, and make sure that you take off all your jewelry and everything so you can just place that aside. And then we're going to start unpacking. Inside, I've given you a plastic sheet that you can just open up. You need to cover your surface because resin is a really, really messy substance to work with. So I find, and I'm not name dropping or anything, but um, the Pick and Pay No Name brand plastic sheets um, or refuse bags works best because the resin actually, you can pull it off tomorrow and you can actually reuse the bag. You're just going to place that on a flat surface. You need to make sure that your surface is flat because resin is a runny substance and it will run to one side or actually drip off. So make sure that you do it on a surface that's flat and then also make sure that it's going to be in a space um, where it's not going to be tampered with. Um, you can actually just leave your, your area flat as this. So inside I've um, given you enough resin um, for the molds that you're going to use. Um, the black one is the hardener and the red one is the resin. You're going to place that aside. You've got your two molds. You've got your initial mixing cup, your paper cup and your wooden stirring stick. You also have your gloves that you're going to wear. Please wear the gloves because um, you know resin like I said is very sticky and once it gets onto your hands it's it's not nice to actually clean it but you can use acetone to to take the excess resin off. I've also given you little measuring cups we're going to do that later with your pigments and your glitters and this is a plastic apron so you can just put that on to just protect your clothing. You've got your pigments um, what's nice about this specific pigment and why I'm choosing it so it's non-toxics um, yeah, so you can mix it with your resin, they can, you can make candles with it, you can use it you know, in various different applications. So this color that I'm going to use today is the mocha. I'm choosing this color just to show you um, the contrast. It will be easy to show on the video. Inside also I've included a little gas mega master lighter that's just to clear out all the bubbles because once there's bubbles in your resin it actually doesn't come out clear. And then lastly, you've got your little spoons that you're going to mix with, so you can just take that out. Okay guys, I just want to quickly show you, um, you have to make sure that your mold is clean, hair free and lint free. Excuse all the, we stay on quite a busy road, so there's quite a few taxis driving up and down. So coming back to the molds, I find um, you can either wash it just with sunlight liquid uh, and warm soapy water. Or say for instance there's a hair like this I just take tape and I just clean my mold like that to make sure that there's no hairs because like I said if there's any hairs or dust cat hair dog hair your own hair um, it will get stuck in the resin and yeah, it will be, be there forever I also want to tell you that I didn't include masks in this kit Usually I would, but with the whole corona and everything going around, um, I assume that everyone has uh, masks. And it's always a good idea to use this because even though, even if you buy a different resin, you get eco-friendly resin, you get no fumes, so it means it's got no VOCs or BPs or anything like that, uh, whatever the container tells you. Um, there is still fumes going around and, you know, just for safety reasons, always use a mask regular mask like this or you know your normal corona masks uh, wear your gloves and your plastic sheeting and cover your clothes okay so let's start you're going to take your paper cup you're going to open up your one bottle the one with your black dot that is the resin hardener so what you want to do is you want to slowly pour that into the cup until everything come out of the little bottle okay then after your hardener that's the black dot is in your cup you want to take your red dot which is the resin and you're going to do the same with that you're going to open it up and just 
pour it inside of the mixture. Okay, so before mixing, make sure to put on your gloves, but to take off all your watches and bangles, anything that's precious. It's just very sticky. I unfortunately can't take off my ring. It was given to me and it can't come off my finger unless I took my finger off. All right, so you can see there's a little bit of bubbles in there. So you want to start mixing and you're going to mix for about three minutes very slowly making sure to mix the resin and the hardener and you also want to make sure to mix and scrape the sides don't know if you can see but there's streaks in it so you're going to try and mix for about three to four minutes just to get rid of the streaks and to make sure that the resin and the hardener actually mix as well this specific uh, resin has got a ratio of one to one you get a lot of other resins available that's got a um, that you mix by, by weight. I prefer the one to one. It's just easier, less math. It's not one of my strong points. So you're just going to slowly mix this. Um, you want to make sure that, like I said, you use all your resin given and not one or less of one specific one because if you don't have the ratios right, then your resin might not dry or it might get sticky. So you're just going to slowly mix and I'll get back to you after this mixed after about three minutes just to show you okay guys so i've mixed it now for three minutes you can see on the surface that there's quite a few bubbles even for me as a resin artist i do get bubbles but i'm going to show you how to get rid of that shortly so after mixing for about three minutes making sure that you scrape the sides all the sides and mixing it right to the bottom you can scrape it again and then you're going to place it aside just for a little while okay I just need to show you something as well I've included the little lighter for you and you're going to use that with your molds um, when I'm doing my boards I use a blowtorch or a heat gun but because you're using molds and the molds are silicone if you put the heat gun or the um, blowtorch on the on the silicone it actually melts inside into the resin so you can't unmold it tomorrow so be very very careful um, when you use silicone molds and resin and make sure that you use a small little lighter like this it's totally sufficient and it won't burn your molds you still want to be careful but um, it's not as big as a problem as the um, blowtorch or the heat gun okay so once you've placed your resin aside you're going to take one measuring cup as you can see it's marked out and what you're going to do is you're going to place some glitter it's just lovely so you're going to place some glitter inside of the measuring cup i usually put my glitters and my pigments in beforehand because what happens a lot of time if you put the resin in that mixture and you then put the powder in it actually blows up and it goes everywhere so i've learned that i need to put this in before okay so i've added 25 milliliters of resin for your two molds and some glitter and i've mixed it very carefully like you can see it's gorgeous amazing amazing it's so beautiful but i'm thinking maybe i should add a little bit of more glitter so i'm just going to go straight ahead Woohoo! like i said it goes everywhere and you just want to mix that into your mixture making sure to scrape the side slowly mix 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 and you're going to put that aside so next step you're going to use another measuring cup you're going to take your pigment and your plastic spoon you're going to open up your pigment little baggy very carefully because these things fly everywhere um, when you use pigment you want to start with a little bit because it really goes a long way and you actually just want to add on if you're not happy with the color um, if you use a little bit the color is not as dense I sometimes place a lot in it to give me a different effect so like you can see there there's just a little bit in it and then we're just going to use that on the sides of the coasters so you just want to use a little bit for that and then you start mixing again mixing and starting very slowly make sure that it's mixed and that it's the color that you want. Oh, look at this, guys. It's absolutely amazing. 
and you're going to place that aside. So, like I said, yay, we're going to start now. Your coasters are clear, clean and um, lint-free, hair-free. These are my molds that I've used before, so yeah, you can see there's a little bit of resin on it. So, there's different ways that you can work and do this specific coaster. You can start from the inside, working your way out, or you can start from the outside, working your way in, or you can just do one side, doing a clear coat you can do there's so many things so i really want to encourage you guys not to just do what i do um take some tips from my video um you know like i said this is just a ba basic intro to get you guys used to working with the actual resin and the pigments and the glitters and everything and just to give you some tips but there's so many videos um just to tell you a short story when I started with resin, um, my husband actually uh, came to me after a month and he said that I watched 49 gig worth of YouTube videos on resin. So there are so many things that you can learn. Um, don't just take one person's advice. See what works for you. See what resin works for you, what method works for you and find your own mojo and groove. And I promise you, you're gonna be hooked I literally eat, sleep, and dream resin the whole time. Um, wherever I go, I just want to resin things. So, okay, let's start with the molds. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two, two methods. I'm going to start with the one that you do from the inside out, and then from the other one I'm going to do a clearer um, method. Like you can see, there's a lot of bubbles on my resin. Just giving it a last scrape. We're going to fix that. There's a lot of bubbles there. Oh, it's gorgeous. Not the bubbles, the actual color and the glitters. Gonna give it a last mix. And you're gonna give your pigment a last mix just to make sure that there's no clumps and everything is dissolved. Okay, so <clears throat> you wanna start with the one. Make sure, like I said, resin is very expensive, so you want to make sure you want to use every single drop. And with this specific one, I'm going to start from the middle. So I'm going to take a little bit of resin with my glitter. I'm going to put it in the middle. Just to start your project. A little bit like that. Now you'll see an amazing thing happens. As soon as you put a coat around it, it's actually going to bring everything inwards as well. So I'm going to slowly just place it like that. And resin flows. It does its own thing. That's why with my boards as well, there's not one board that looks the same. I can do eight boards at, uh, in one um, session with the same colors, same board, same resin, everything. And it's just not this, the same. So with this one, you're just going to make little circles around it, very slowly, around this one. There you go. Okay, like I said, there's various little things that you can do with it. You can now put another layer of glitter on this side here, depending on what you want and your what you feel like like I said it's an amazing amazing medium to work with and I absolutely just love it it's oh goodness so you just want to make sure that you pour that around and then you're going to use your little flame and like you can see it's actually just popping all those bubbles making sure that you don't use it at one spot and you can actually come back later and do it again because the bubbles will actually go to the surface. So this one, I'm just gonna quickly flame it like that, popping some bubbles. And I actually wanna do some more pigment. So you can go around using your pigment every single time, just creating a new look and creating something that you like, or your friends are gonna like as gifts. And it's such a fun thing to do and actually make something for someone and actually give it to them and it's got so much meaning and so 
feel much better than just something that's store bought. Okay, so I'm just adding some more colors here. If I want to add some more glitter, I can do that. And you'll see it will go, actually it will spread the resin out again, forming another ring. Yeah, so this one, I'm just going to leave it a bit so that the bubbles can come to the surface. And I'll quickly show you how to do the next one. Okay, so this one we're going to start differently. We're actually going to start from the outside inwards. I want to make a nice pigmented side. Just going to slowly, as close to the edge as you can. Obviously, if I pour more resin, it will actually push it to the side. So you just want to go around. Maybe leave a little bit just for the inside if you feel like it. And just actually make sure that you feel your artwork. Okay, like I said, there's so many things that we're going to do. So we're going to give you, give this little coaster another layer inside. And then you want to place some of that gorgeous glitter inside. I'm going to add a little bit more glitter just to show you guys and I'm actually going to pour some pigment inside my cup and mixing it so I'm make sure that you mix it there's a half of color So yeah, this one you can make little patterns. Resin does its own thing. And you'll see by tomorrow when we do the on-molding that um, this will not look like what we're doing at the moment. And I think that's the fun of it, is that come tomorrow you'll get a nice surprise. So yeah, there's a little bit of resin left. We can start closing the cup a bit like that, just to give you a, a, a thinner pour. Again, doing it in the middle. Just adding resin and just spreading out, making sure that you fill the resin mold, the silicone mold. You also don't want to fill it that it actually overflows. So keep an eye on it and make sure that you divide your resin between your two molds. This one is, I don't know if my friendly camera girl can actually show you. On the side it's nice and level it actually needs a little bit more there but we're going to torch it and then we're going to fill it up again so this one we can add a little more resin so yeah take your time with it um, this specific resin has got about 60 minutes potting time which means after you've mixed it you've got about 60 minutes to manipulate it um, in your different patterns and things like that so you can see that I'm going over with a torch, with a lighter, just to get rid of all those pesky little bubbles. You can see it, it's actually very satisfying. <laughs> um, making sure not to stay in one spot and actually just running over it very gently, very softly, just to get rid of some excess bubbles. And this one's got quite a few, but look how cool that is. As soon as you run over it with a with the heat, it actually pops. I actually started, I did my first resin table in 2004, um, and it's actually in my mom's dining room um, as a coffee table. And uh, that was one of, her, one of my first resin projects, not with the same resin, but the ones that you could still buy in the little boxes, and I was so excited, and it was such a new thing to do. And I was totally chuffed with it. And like I said, it's still beautiful, it still glistens. Um, there's still bubbles coming up and up, so I just want to make sure that you get rid of that. I quite like this color as well. This one is also, you can see all the little finer little resin marbling that's going on there. Okay, so let's make sure that we put a little bit just in the middle, just to give it a little bit of a dot. 
and then tomorrow we're going to be all excited to see what's happened with the resin. I also find that if you run it down like this, the little streaks it makes gives a beautiful effect. And tomorrow, when we do the unmolding, we'll have a big, big surprise. So let's use this one again. Like I said, you can play around with your colors. If you don't like a specific pattern, you can change it up a bit. You can add more. Just giving your artwork a unique pattern. I'm going to do a little bit of a ring around the glitter just to keep it intact and keeping it from moving. You can see it actually binds it together into the middle again, making sure not to overflow the mold. I lift it up and there we go. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Okay, so then tomorrow is the big, big reveal and the big surprise. So you want to torch it again just to make sure. I usually come back in about 10 minutes just to torch it again. It sounds like I'm torturing my molds, but just want to torch it, make sure that there's no bubbles, get rid of most bubbles. And then we're going to cover it up. You can cover it with um, a cardboard box. Or I'll show you what I use, especially for the little small molds like this. It actually works perfectly. I use my mixing jugs that I use um, for my bigger projects. I always put it down upside down so you can just remove the resin tomorrow. Um, and I use my measuring cups over and over and over. I've been using these now for mm, almost a year now. So you just want to run over that. What I always usually do is I'll always have a side view just to make sure that there's no hair. If there's any hair, you can just remove it with your with a toothpick. Absolutely love it. It's so gorgeous. It's going to look fantastic. I just want to show you here. You see the little the mold here. There's a little bit of space, so you can just add a little bit more resin. Um, Otherwise it's going to make a ridge and that's very difficult to get part of. And as the resin dries it actually um, concaves in your mold. So you just want to make sure that you've got the right amount. So this one you can see it's just right. It's not overflowing but there's no gaps between the edges and the resin. This one we can see that there's a little gap so I can pour a little bit of resin again making sure that you want to do it slowly and you'll get used to it there we go there we go awesome one last torch and I'll come back in about five minutes again not longer just to torch it again Okay guys, so after five minutes, you just want to come back, torching it very lightly again, making sure or trying to remove as much of the bubbles that you can. And that is your product done. I usually, like I said, I use my measuring cups, place it over like that or a tub or um, any container just to keep out any hairs. And then uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, just to show you and do, to do the unmolding and finishing up your project. Hi guys, so we're back. It's 24 hours later and we had these um, molds that we did yesterday covered. I've taken them out and I'm now going to show you how to unmold them. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to slowly and gently pull away the silicone mold away from your resin. You'll hear a nice crackling, popping sound. And just gently popping them out like that and then just look at that that's the one side and then this is the other side 
So you can see where I showed you guys yesterday with those drips. That is the pattern that it actually made. Okay, and let's see this one. So gently gonna just pull it away. Uh, we're standing outside today because um, my cleaner is here today, so she's busy with the vacuum cleaner inside. So we just decided to do this quick video for you outside. Just pull your mold away from your coaster and just gently pull it away and just look at that. And that's how easy it is. Okay, I've also placed a few samples here of coasters that I've done. Uh, just to show you the different colors uh, the one that we did yesterday these ones um, the color pigment that we use for that is the magic mocha and then I also want to show you how gorgeous the rose gold came out and then also show you in my next video how to um, actually do the sides I've done one side so you can see what it looks like finished and unfinished just to give it that little bit of glisten and glass just to make your gift something special so there you can see that's the rose gold gorgeous is that um, two different shapes that's then the rose gold this is the white lustre and that's also done with a I've opted for a gold but you can obviously go for a white side or then a silver side so that color is the white lustre there's the pigment and then this was a, a huge hit in the starter kits it's the Neptune blue you can see how gorgeous that came out nice see-through middle also done the sides just to give it a good finish nice and glossy and then this one um, is the new shape, the geode shape, that we'll be doing in the next um, starter kit. Um, so that will just give you this stunning shape that's now very fashionable and, and hip. Look at that beautiful patterns. So that color is a bit darker than the Magic Mocha. It's more of a brown, but a coppery brown, and that's the double espresso. Okay, and then lastly, um, I'm going to show you some other shapes this is also the white luster but I'm gonna try and actually do some different colors you guys can pop me a DM or a um, mail just to let me know if there's a certain color that you would like then I'll see what's the fan favorites and actually include that as well that's the white luster this is the rose gold remember yesterday we talked about adding more pigment or less pigment you can see here uh, yeah, I only added a little bit of pigment and then I didn't like the color so I added more pigment so you can see that it's actually giving a you can see the difference now between the two colors um, whereas I used more pigment and less pigment okay so this is the magic mocha just look how gorgeous that came out I've left this color um, or the sides clear just to get that effect some people like a more minimalistic look this came out gorgeous so this is the geode shape that we're going to do in the next starter kit and there's the different rings that I've poured glitter in the side just look at those patterns so this is the geode mold that we'll be including in the kit in the next time so you can play around with that and then lastly I want to show you guys this gorgeous gorgeous coaster that I made previously and um, this will also be included sometime very very soon just look at those colors just look at all the patterns look at the the different flow of the resin and everything and the stars so what will happen um, you can buy this either in four loose coasters but I've actually bought them now for you guys to make it easier because I find it works easier if the four is connected so it looks like a pizza um, it's round and then it's got four quarters that you can actually do your pores um, directly in. So I've only got a limited amount of um, those molds left. But just look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Super excited to share this with you guys. 
Um, and thank you for watching. And thank you so much again for your support during this time. I really appreciate it. Um, if you need any help or if you want to just chat, just you're more than welcome to um, DM me or send me a mail and I'll, have, I'll be happy to help. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.